Greetings! Welcome back to Old Ways Rising Farm YouTube channel. Today we are going to continue our mushroom growing project and produce plug spawn for easily inoculating logs later on this spring. So I'm just pulling some of these out of boiling water. This is to pasteurize them. Um, these plugs that we're going to grow the fungi on are readily available from any woodworking supply catalog. These are oak. They don't have to be oak, but oak is a good choice because, especially red oak, assuming your mushroom species is capable of colonizing red oak, because they will absorb water really well. Ash is also good. White oak is not as good because they're going to take their merry time soaking some water up. This batch has been boiled for about an hour or so. This batch is still cold and these are just soaking. Okay. So we want to get them nice and moist inside. We want them to absorb water. The mushrooms will need that in order to colonize this medium. Now what these are are plugs that furniture makers will use to pin boards together when they're edge gluing boards and you can drill, you know, two holes in either side of your board, put a plug in, and help join that board. Right? So these are very, very easy to come by, these little ribbed plugs. And they're really good for this. Um, the oyster mushrooms are going to work with today. We'll colonize, colonize these quite well. Shiitakes, this is their favorite wood, actually. Um, and these ribs will give the mycelium somewhere to go so that when we drill a hole in the log and put that in, those ribs will maintain a little bit of air space and room for the mycelium to easily jump into the log that we're trying to colonize. So it's a very nice, convenient um, material to use. And not expensive, and it's easily available. Very, very easy to come by. Okay, so these ones that are cold, they're going to be next to go into the boiling pot, so I'm just going to put them there for the next batch and set that away. We're also going to need a jar to put these in. So I boiled some canning jars. Now if you notice this jar has a label on it, it's been smushed to s hot. It's been smushed out of existence here, but this is a Classico spaghetti jar. I am not sponsored by anybody, my opinions are my own, but I will put a plug in for Classico. This is the really the only brand of spaghetti sauce that we buy if we can avoid it, um, if, we can, if, if, if we have the option, I should say. Because their jars are made deliberately for reusability, and the rings and lids are standard canning jar rings and lids. I think the glass is slightly thinner, so they're a little easier to break. But I haven't noticed, I haven't noticed any real difference. So we always buy, um, yeah, they're even made by Mason. The the jars are even made by the Mason Jar Company, right? So we always buy Classico spaghetti sauce, and then we don't have to buy canning jars. We just reuse these. So that's why that is there. So we want this too. I just keep kept checking temperature here. It's still pretty warm. So we want these things to cool. And let's talk about how our um, spawn has done. So we have the blue oysters, which have quite nicely colonized. You can see the white film all the way across the surface of this cardboard. This cardboard is fully colonized with blue oyster mycelium. Okay, so this one worked really well. The same day I did these, and these were prepared in an earlier video. I'll put a link up at the end of the video going back to the first one. Um, the uh, second variety we worked with was Maytaki. These are a little trickier to get to go, and they did not succeed. These did not grow. Okay, So that'll end up, it's been long enough, they're not going to grow at this point. And... Yes, just a little bit of moisture. The lion's mane that we tried on the same day also were not a success. Okay, 
So I mentioned when we were doing this that you're not going to have 100% success, especially with stuff you purchased from the grocery store. If you have a grow kit, a mushroom grow kit, or you just harvested your own off of a log, or you got that from the store the day they were packed, you're going to have much higher success than, it's been sitting, than if it's been sitting on a shelf or in a distribution center for a week and a half, right? So it's a little bit hit and miss, but it is a good way that you can get started. And assuming you are going to eat the mushroom anyway, it's almost free to just cut off some of those bottoms and, and start to work with this. Okay, but we do have one that was a complete success, so we are happy. Now, all we're going to do here is we're going to take some of these plugs, and they're kind of baby bottle warm at this point. Just like with this, we don't have to be perfectly sterile. I'm not gloving up for this or anything. And we're going to layer in little bits of that even attached to the plastic. Okay. We're going to layer in pieces of this cardboard. Look at all that beautiful mycelium. Okay. And if it won't burn my hands, it, it's, it's not harmful. It's not going to destroy the mushrooms. Also, I did bring these up to room temperature for an hour or so before doing this, so we're not shocking them okay. with a big temperature change. I did wash my hands very well and clean the table before doing this. So we're not we're not being sterile, but we are clean. Okay. And fill her up. We have a warm but not hot, right? I can hold on to these for an extended period. That's not bothering me. I bother my hands. Warm but not hot, mushroom spawn parfait. Now, to get these to grow rapidly, we need to cover them in a way which does not include airflow, but does keep dust and mold out. Easiest way to do that is to just give them a little foil hat. Okay? Put it on tight enough that it's not just going to fall off and you know coming far enough down that air currents aren't going to swirl and blow a lot of dust in on top of that, but not so tight that you can't have normal exchange of air back and forth. Right? And this is standard. This is how Microbiology labs do jars and flasks and stuff like this all the time, right? So if you've ever seen a, a news report that was inside a biology lab and you saw a whole bunch of jars with tinfoil on top, this is why. Because you need to keep the dust out, but you want to allow airflow in. Um, you could also use, if you were doing something in liquids, you could use a fermentation lock. It accomplishes the same thing. But if you don't have a fermentation lock and you're doing liquids, you can just do this. <laughs> because it accomplishes the same thing. So we will Sharpie marker a label on here that these are the oysters and I am going to proceed to fill up the rest of these jars and then whatever's left over of this culture will go back in the fridge and it should be able to keep in the fridge for a couple, two, three months without severe harm. And when the weather nices up a little bit, we'll inoculate some logs with both forms of spawn. So I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you next time on Old Ways Rising Farm YouTube channel.